Hey, this is Joe and Tell, and today I'm with Techno Dad. What's up? What's going on, everybody? <laughs> How are you guys doing out there? I was gonna do the thing right after the jump. <laughs> oh man, no, that, that's not my intro. That's no, my that's intro. not your intro. That's not my intro. kind of a hot topic right now, right? And it's about the scientific approach to audio, right? So a lot of people like to just say like, you know, it's just whatever my ears say, right? Like forget measurements, forget all that. Uh -huh. Like none of that matters. Only thing that matters is if it sounds good to me. Yeah. So I mean, like, look, man, like you can spend 10, 20, $30,000 on some speakers. You know, but if like this two or three hundred dollar pair sound better to you, they're the better speaker, right? And the better buy. But like everybody's hearing is different, just like everybody's eyesight, everybody's taste is different. You know, I, I'm into wine. My wife is a sommelier. You know, some of the best bottles of wine are like under 20 bucks. Mm. You know, I've spent two hundred dollars on a bottle of wine. Sure. And it was great. But some of the other ones are better. It's kind of like that. You know, it's different. People have different tastes in music, in sound. Um, you know, I like clipped speakers. They have a horn-loaded tweeter. Some people don't like that, you know. Um, and when you talk about, like, you know, the way speakers are made and all the tiny little, like, you know, like on the cabin in here, it's like indented a little bit. It's not a full on square on the primes or the ultras. Whereas on the Elax, they're full on like, you know, rectangle. Right, right. It has right. a truncated uh, right. frame, yeah. Right. So, like, all those things play a part into it. So, you know, as far as measurements are concerned, that's cool. So, you know, like, you know, on paper, you know, I can look at the spec sheet and be like, oh, on paper, this sounds good. This will probably be good. These right. bookshelves go down to 44 hertz. Fantastic. Right. You know, right. might not have to have a subwoofer or whatever. Right. But then when you hear them, you're like, oh, well, you know, the mid range kind of sounds a little uninspiring or flat. And it's very hard to kind of describe these things. Well, you know, I mean, for me, I think it's important because a lot of people shop online. Right. right. No, totally. So if you're going to shop online, I think it's important to see some specs, at least well, know sure. how low it's going to go. For sure. Right. It'll give you an idea. Right. right? To me, that's that's like important to see that what are what's the ohms right is your amp going to be able to handle the speaker or and sensitivity so, sensitivity how loud are you actually going to be in you know your space right, you know right. and that's that's pretty pretty much based on sensitivity um and yeah no totally i i on my live streams people ask me hey i want to buy this av receiver and i wanted to get these speakers what do you think and i'll if i don't know them i'll look them up right then and be like well on paper you know sounds like it should yeah. be pretty good uh, matching, but as I always say, you know, if you're gonna buy speakers, try to listen to them first. And I know, like, I even I, I told you, mm. a six hour round trip to a Best Buy for me. So you live out there, huh? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, for me, online shopping is pretty much it. You know, right, right. You know? So, so like the way I look at it is, I listen with my ears first, and then I use the measurements to verify that what I'm hearing is true. Right? Or it helps it helps me describe what I'm actually hearing. So I'm like, hey, I, I notice this one sounds like it has a little more bass. If I do a measurement and it has a lot more bass, well, it kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. So it's not just me. So that's the way I kind of approach it. Mm -hmm. So it's not, a lot of people think like, oh, you, li you, you do the measurements first and then you listen. So if it's flat, you automatically like it. That's not true, right? So I listen first. That's just my approach. Right. I mean, I haven't taken many measurements. I usually just listen and what I like to do um, in a two-channel situation is first listen to the speakers on my Halo integrated, my Parasound mm. uh, two-channel amplifier because it's got tone controls right on the front. So I listen to a f like three or four different tracks and there's even a track like there's a, the whole CD um, is really bright. Mm. And when you have speakers, when I, I'll play it and if it's like harsh, yeah. then I know that that speaker is just kind of like elevated in the high section. You know what I mean? I see what you're saying. So yeah. it, because you don't have something to, to do measurements, you get a song that's like extreme at one end, like either extremely bassy or extremely like treble. Yeah. Uh, you know, the highs are sharp. And yeah. so you'll be able to tell one speaker compared to the other. Exactly. Based on that, right? And so I took that I took that CD with me to CES and I, when I'm demoing these expensive speakers... You might as well say, you know they're going to be asking. What? What's, which track is it? 
Oh, I was gonna ask like. Okay, the same so question. it's um, it's uh, for you guys watching at home. Um, it is Florence and the Machine, the album Lungs, right? Their first album, uh-huh. the one with um, there's a song called Drumming Song, that one. And so, what are you looking for? It's really bright. Like, okay. It's really bright. And if it's brighter uh-huh. and harsher, uh-huh. then that speaker's got a boost in the treble somewhere. Got it. All right. Right? All and right. so usually for that, I would go into my um, tone controls and turn down the treble so I can turn up the volume and hear the rest of the song. And so that's what I use as a test if it's, you know, speakers are too trebly. 